Well, okay. Thank you so much for uh, helping us out today, Bevan. Um, just for those of you who have tuned in, um, Bevan McLeod is from Blue Rock, who are, I would say, hospitality accounting specialists. I um, might give you an opportunity just to give a bit rundown about the company yourself and, and, and yourself as well. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Peter. So, um, hi, everyone. My name's Bevan McLeod. I'm a director with uh, Blue Rock. Uh, so, we, we call ourselves a specialist uh, entrepreneurial advisory firm. Um, so, our business is um, primarily made up of accountants and lawyers, but we also have a number of other specialists um, that are uh, really there to um, help uh, entrepreneurs grow and um, build their business. So, um, so it's not unusual to have an accountant on one of these sessions, but uh, we've been running a lot of our own where it's been an accountant and a lawyer and perhaps someone from, um, from our finance division talking about, um, talking about some of the lending criteria from the banks. So, um, so Blue Rock itself has been around for a number of years. Um, it's, we're now into our 12th year. Um, we are very connected to the hospitality industry in that um, we both advise uh, venues, but um, own a few ourselves. Um, so um, like everyone who's on the call, who's probably going through a fair bit of pain at the moment, um, we're with you. Um, we're experiencing that as well. So um, yeah, but looking forward to the session and um, yeah, hopefully getting a bit of virtual dialogue going. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks very much. Um, obviously being entrepreneurs and, and a lot of the business owners who have joined us are very time poor. And, and so we want to pack as much information as we can in a little short time frame. We don't want to run this for, for too long, maybe half an hour or so. Um, yep. And then give opportunity, well, including that time, the opportunity for people to ask questions as well. So, I mean, this is a part of Abacus trying to do more for our customers, giving the opportunity to, to, to learn, not from, from yourself and, and have those questions answered. But we've also done a few interviews with other specialists in the field as well. Um, so just to frame today, um, obviously we'll talk about um, sort of ways in which the governments have uh, assisted business owners, whether they be uh, grants or, or, or tax rebates um, um, from either federal, state, or even the local level. Um, and then go from there. So, I mean, I think we just had a brief chat before and you did a webinar not long ago about standing down and I was saying that that was probably the flavor of the month, uh, maybe a week or two ago and how quickly things do change. Um, now it's maybe JobKeeper, but even that's probably on its way out, but still we're catching a tail end of it. But yeah, that's, I mean, for those, I mean, uh, I imagine being a business owner, all we're trying to do right now is trying to survive, right? Um, yeah. Trying to keep my staff, trying to keep the doors open. And we're too busy in, in to know exactly what is out there. We've heard whispers and murmurs of um, PAYG, of um, JobKeeper, of um, I don't know, maybe a rental assistance, but we've never really had, okay, now I'm going to sit down. I want to know exactly what's out there for me. So, yep. yeah, can you... Uh, Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. So, um, so what I'll start with is um, just looking at some of the federal government measures. Um, so the first announcement that the government made was around the cash flow boost, um, and that's the PAYG uh, credit that is going to go back on to participating or to all businesses. Um, they're going to have a credit applied to their activity statement account, um, which is administered by the ATO. Now, the amount of that credit is based on um, what you've reported as your PAYG withholding um, for the month of March. So if you're a monthly remitter, um, it'll be that, um, that amount reported in March times three, um, which will cater for January, February withholding. And, but if you're a quarterly remitter, it'll just be that quarterly amount that should appear as a credit on your activity statement. Um, now, that those credits have started, we've seen with our clients, those credits have started to, um, to be put through. So the, the ATO is sort of getting ahead, if you like, in terms of those credits, which is great. Um, but it's not really cash in the bank. It's really just reducing the liability or reducing your exposure to the ATO um, in the short term. Now that cash flow boost 
is um, up to $50,000 between now and or from January to June. And then based on what you're paid in that period, you'll receive the same amount from July to the end of October um, as a credit against your PAYG. So that, that measure itself is just designed to give some relief to the businesses who are employing staff um, or who are paying wages. Now, initially everyone was sort of, a lot of commentary was saying that it didn't go far enough um, to, because you know, no one could really afford to pay wages if, you know, particularly for the hospitality industry where you know, they had to shut the doors or were, were you know, pretty much in a position where they were forcibly um, had to shut their doors. So, um, so the next wave of stimulus, if you like, um, is in the form of JobKeeper, um, which is putting money in the pockets of employees, but um, giving the employers some relief in terms of meeting their requirements um, or you know, paying their staff. So um, the rules in JobKeeper are quite complex um, and I'm sure we'll get into the detail around that. So I'm happy to sort of um, come back to that one. Um, the other things that are probably um, not as topical, um, but still relevant, um, there are a number of things that, from a policy point of view, that the um, that Treasury have implemented. Um, so, uh, giving banks um, or relaxing the policy rules around lending so that it can um, free up some credit in the system. Um, our experience, at least, has been that um, it's still as hard to get money out of the bank at the moment than what it was before the virus hit. Um, but at least there, it is putting um, a few different products onto the market um, to help you know people where they really are in need. And, and what I'm referring to there is the, the SME stimulus um, like, or guaranteed loan where the government are effectively going 50% guarantor for any new unsecured loans, um, but you still have to apply through a bank and meet all the credit policies employed by the bank. So they're, they're probably the three biggest um, bits of stimulus um, from a feb federal government level. Um, and then as you start to work your way down, there are a number of things that if you're a, you know, a business located in Victoria um, or in any of the respective states, the states have actually um, really come to the party and will probably, in a lot of ways, they're a lot quicker to react, but I suppose they're dealing with a lot um, their own sort of territories, but um, a lot of the states and territories are providing cash boosts um, to businesses that have been affected where they're, they're under a certain level of turnover. So um, in Victoria, that's um, a $10,000 cash boost, um, which is through their business support fund. Um, and that ha those payments are happening almost immediately. We had a client um, apply last week uh, and uh, got accepted within three days and the cash hit their bank account yesterday. So that's how quick they are um, administering those funds. That's interesting. So how, how does uh, someone apply for that one? Yeah, so um, you can go to the Victorian government website. Um, there's a, a link called the Business Support Fund um, and it, the requirement there is that you have to um, register for their system, which is basically creating an account on their grant system. Um, and there's an application that the requirement is uh, similar to what the JobKeeper requirements are around um, showing evidence that your business has been affected by the, the virus and um, it's the same measure. So a 30% drop in turnover um, will be will make you eligible for for that grant. So just to make that clear, because uh, this came up um, in conversation with someone today, that 30% drop in turnover, is that on the previous month or is that same time last year with the quarter? Yep. Um, so we, we, we've had um, some clarification on that and it's just been this week. So the test that is being applied um, and all of the um, various measures are now starting to follow what uh, the, the test is for JobKeeper. Um, and so for, for what they're using for JobKeeper is 
based on your March period, you need, so the month of March, you need to be able to show a 30% drop in revenue from the same period last year. So applying the March figures and applying that and comparing to March last year, you can use March or April as a monthly figure. Um, or you can use the April to June quarter. Um, now I know that we're, you know, we're only sort of into the first month of that quarter, um, but the ATO have um, said in their guidance that they will accept, um, if you like, a, a forecast or an estimate of what your revenue is going to be for the quarter. Um, if you're in an industry that um, you know has been affected and is quite clearly been affected, then we don't expect to be a lot of scrutiny in terms of the numbers that you that you estimate. Um, but you can actually show, if you like, the, the April quarter, compare that to the April quarter last year. Um, and if there has been a 30% decline over that period, then, then you are eligible. Got it. Cool. Um, just one trick in all of that is, um, and some people might look at it on face value um, and say compare uh, what they've received in cash over that period. Um, and then, you know, their, their revenue might be um, relying on them invoicing out and therefore recognising that revenue when they invoice out. The ATO have been pretty, um, th their initial thought is that they will apply the, the accounting method that you um, use for GST reporting, which will either be cash or accrual. Um, if you don't qualify under cash, then you do have the option to qualify under accrual method of accounting, which you know, has given some people relief because the you know they may have mm -hmm. um, seen some money come in. Um, you know, might have been late last year um, or during that period, which didn't really relate to the period that it was earned. Um, and we're going to see that same thing. They might have some cash come in, but it may not be enough to get the business through the quarter and invoicing's dried up. So um, you can use an accrual method of accounting to compare, which um, you know, will will mean that more businesses will become eligible. Yeah, it's, it's good that they're pro providing that flexibility, whether they're giving you that cash or accounting. Uh, yeah. At all, whether it's a quarter or the month, which is good. Um, also, for those who are, are participating with us at the moment, feel free to answer questions as we go. I think um, you yeah. might have questions, so feel free, don't be shy, just ask and I'm sure Bevan will be happy to answer. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, so the, the state government, um, if you are a, um, a business that turns over more than um, $3 million um, and are paying payroll tax, um, you will have by now, um, if you've applied, received uh, some payroll tax relief um, in that you know, most states and territories are refunding their, their payroll tax um, amounts that they've collected for the year, um, but also just giving some relief in terms of not asking for any more payroll tax to be paid for the remainder of this financial year. Mm. Um, so that, they're sort of the two measures, if you like, from the states. Um, now, they're all sort of now considering land tax relief, which is great. Um, so if you like, we're sort of we're sort of slowly sort of filtering down to various levels of business um, in terms of the relief being offered. But probably the the biggest thing for hospitality has been um, so JobKeeper is there to sort of protect, if you like, um, employment or um, boost it or bolster employment when if and when. Um, you can reopen, but, you know, give some relief to the people that are, you know, employed by your business. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is around the rental relief. So um, the Code of Conduct, which um, was agreed to by the National Cabinet um, and then up to the various states to implement through their own legislation or through their own tenancy acts, was designed to give some, some tenants um, some protections around um, paying their rent. So again, tied to the JobKeeper eligibility. So if you can prove that drop off in turnover, um, up to a certain amount will be um, uh, will qualify as a rent abatement, which means that you won't need to pay up to a certain amount at all, um, and the remainder can be treated as a rent deferral, um, 
which again, probably doesn't remove the need to pay rent at all, but so that the landlords do get some rent, but it, it does just defer, if you like, um, some um, the cash flow impact of having to pay rent during this time if you are shut down. Yeah, it helps, but it's, it's not, yeah. It, it helps, but it doesn't quite help, <laughs> you know what I mean? I imagine a yeah. lot of people out there will say, oh, that's it. it's just pushing up my obligations later on. I'm still gonna have to find that money when I struggle to pay all those other bills. And I, I think that, you know, more broadly, that's been, um, if you like, the, the government has announced that this is how they're helping, but um, in a lot of ways, it, it has just been a deferral of, you know, an obligation as, you know, businesses try to get through as best they can. So, um, and that, that includes your dealings with the ATO. So the ATO are being quite flexible in terms of, um, you know, asking for payment. So if you, you do have an amount that's outstanding, um, either coming up or, you know, currently on, on the account, um, you can seek deferral terms around that. But again, it's not removing it. It's uh, just deferring it to a later day. Sure. Um, so you've covered the federal ones and, and some of the states. Are there any others uh, or at uh, sort of a local council level that you know? I mean, I, I know of the city of Melbourne ones because obviously yep. I'm there, but there yeah, and that's or some others that you might know of. Yeah, and that's that's where we're encouraging everyone to um, just look at their local council guides. Um, yes, you're right, the City of Melbourne, again, that they've set aside $5 million to support Melbourne businesses within in the, the City of Melbourne boundaries. So, and that's to promote um, uh, sort of businesses trying to adapt to these conditions. So changing, you know, if you say a, um, a restaurant or a cafe, um, giving you some money to help you know, innovate around some service offerings that may include, you know, developing takeaway, a takeaway offering and getting, um, getting your menu online, that sort of thing. So, um, so the city of Melbourne have been really good. They're also a pretty big council, so they've got the money to spend, um, but we'd encourage everyone to go to their local council websites as well and see what, um, what the local council is doing. Um, the other thing that is probably worth noting is that there are a lot of, um, industry specific grants out there um, that are probably um, probably weren't on high on the priority list but um, yeah we've, we've been pretty much inundated with uh, the number of requests around um, various grants so you know at the moment we're looking at arts grants looking at innovation grants that sort of thing just any any form of government support um, so I just had someone um provide their comment saying it's a 7k incentive but yeah you're, you're right and I, I might just touch upon this because I'm, I'm quite familiar at the moment so the city of melbourne are providing grants like you said five million um but be worried that the deadline is uh this friday so you yeah. better get in fast um i actually did speak to them yesterday so it's not necessarily a first in best dress it is they are going to process it in one batch um so just to recap it is five thousand dollars to get your business online um, there is also another 2,000 additional for, for training and upskilling. Um, there's also another 10,000 available for capital expenditure. So yep. that's something that they're going to match um, the dollar for dollar for you. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, well, uh, is there any, I guess, strategies or, or tactics at, at this point in time? Yeah, so the biggest thing that... Um, we've sort of been working through over at least the last two two um, weeks has been just being really conscious around cash flow is probably the first and foremost. So having some form of cash flow forecast um, and starting to build in some of these stimulus measures so that you, so that we are as business owners aware of, you know, how, you know, or what our position is going to be. Um, if it looks like that um, that cash flow at a certain point in time um, goes into the red, um, thinking about strategies of how we can um, top up, top up, or find some funding for that amount, some short-term funding. 
Um, so that's where um, we have had a, a number of clients um, apply for the uh, the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar loans, um, or you know, up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan. Um, the other thing that we have had is that if, um, and this is something that would it's probably not stimulus related, but a lot of time spent with clients at the moment, um, just understanding, okay, well, what does their business look like um, when we all get through this? Um, because it's these sort of pivotal moments in time where a lot of innovation happens um, and it's, it's actually a really good time to think different, uh, think a little bit differently about your business and think about how, how you're going to operate um, post the virus mm. um, and so um, you know, talking to clients about you know how they're going to reposition their business um, you know in sort of three or four months time we expect that whilst we get past the the, the virus or the if you like the medical impact of what, what we're going through at the moment the actual economic impact is probably a bit further down the train and that's going to come when um, unemployment you know, data through unemployment go, comes through. Um, we start to see um, a bit more, you know, bad, a few more bad news stories about um, businesses entering, you know, administration, that sort of thing. So I think it's going to get, from an economic point of view, it's probably going to get harder before it gets better. Um, so how are we positioning our business to do that? Um, and so a lot of the strategies that we're employing is um, understanding you know, what is the business that we want to be in 12 months time? Who are the people that we're going to need to, to run that business? Um, and then what are we actually doing now whilst we've, you know, theoretically got a bit of downtime um, to think about how we, how we implement that. So, um, so that, that's from a business strategy point of view. At a more tactical level, um, we are looking at a number of things with clients through just even just, you know, the, the, the rainy day things that never seem to get done are getting done. Um, so tidying up employment contracts because we've all been looking at those over the last month, um, making sure that we're, we're squeaky clean when it comes to awards, that sort of thing. Um, so there is, there is a lot of housekeeping being done over this time. So. Yeah, you make, you make a good point in that um, strategically we should be gearing ourselves up for later on. I mean... When this all happens, we, we didn't know, none of us, this is all unprecedented, right? None of this yeah. happened before, ever. Um, so we didn't know how long this was going to go for. Uh, at that time, we thought it might be a few months, it might be to the end of the year. Um, even the short-term thinking now is, okay, um, May 11th possibly is, is a date where restrictions are going to be lifted. Is it going to be a, a race to the finish line? Are people going to be out there, okay, I'm catching up with this friend, I'm catching up with family, we're going out, we're going to make the most of this, right? Is it going to be bang, business booming? Or, I mean, what does the economy look like then? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've done the forecast. Yeah. Is it going to be, actually, it's not going to be that great. It's not, okay, everything's back to normal. It's things are not the same. People have been laid off. Um, the, the, the discretionary spend is a lot lower. Um, what does it look like? And, and so if that's the case, what advice would you give to someone who was about to sign a lease to start a new restaurant or cafe? Should you say, actually, maybe it's not a good time, maybe hold off for the next four months? Yeah. Um, look, look, I think, you know, more broadly, if, and um, like the, the information that we sort of are privy to, I suppose, or that we're fortunate enough to get a hold of, we have a couple of economists that work pretty closely with the firm and, and sort of are monitoring, um, if you like, the macroeconomic impact of what's happening with the virus. And um, you know, their, their view is is that um, you know, mark, if you like, financial markets will take a hit and then they'll recover, but then they'll take a bigger hit um, as you know, as you know, the reporting season starts. Um, what that does is it it breeds a bit of negativity. Um, in the market, so banks will sort of tighten their lending even further, even though, you know, once at the moment it's been relaxed, but um, the stimulus from the government, or if you like, the big stick from the government 
will be taken away at some point. So um, we expect that it will get tougher for a lot of people that are you know, exposed to the banks. Um, and so as a result, what that's going to do is um, for the people that perhaps are being a little bit conservative at the moment, um, you know, perhaps not looking to, to grow uh, or are looking to grow, but probably not in a rush to do it right now, um, what they'll find is that there may be some opportunities in the market um, that haven't really been able to, you know, haven't presented themselves in the past. Um, and that's because, you know, players have left the market um, in terms of rental opportunities or new locations. Landlords, I think, will absolutely um, have to, you know, if the, if the businesses themselves can't sort of stay in business, then, you know, that'll put some pressure on landlords. Um, so I think there may be some, you know, if you like, some, some easing, if you like, of conditions in trying to find new locations. The other thing that we've probably noticed more than anything, and that's because we're in a people business, but for a lot of our clients that, you know, um, are in professional services, they said the amount of talent that has now already hit the market um, just because people have either lost their jobs or they were sort of part of the gig economy um, and had projects dry up. So we are seeing a lot of really good people, you know, come onto the market and therefore the decision to hire someone, um, you know, two months ago might have been on the back of we're just flat out and we just need people. But now if you can wait, um, you might be able to get, you know, an even better person at the same price sort of thing. So, so I think they're the sort of the downstream things that perhaps right now is a good good time to be a, a little bit conservative um, because, you know, in time there will be some opportunities present themselves that, you know, otherwise wouldn't have. Absolutely. I was just having a conversation today with someone who, who had his eye on a, on a building across the road from him. Um, and I think at that time, it was about 2.6 million with a $80,000 um, yearly lease. Um, the owner today is accepting 2 million. So that you can see in that span of a few months, he's able to pick up that bargain if, if he wants to. So yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a question from um, one of our um, participants. He's asked, is month to month rental agreement becoming common? Um, yeah. So. It's Probably, um, probably a good question for one of our lawyers, um, but uh, we certainly haven't been asked to, to look at month-to-month -month rentals, um, but I would say, look, it's market forces will say will dictate that, yes, they will become more, more common um, because um, I think, yeah, as, um, as tenants are given more opportunity um, through the vacancy rate that, you know, they can be a bit more selective and, and not carry that as much risk. So, so, I, so am I making the assumption that question is based on someone who's reached the end of their lease agreement and then asking for month to month, or is that someone who's entering a new lease and saying, Hey, would you consider a month to month? Or both? I think it's both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I, I think, um, you know, a lot of, um, so he's yeah. come to confirm, yeah, his question was to enter a new lease. Yeah, so a month to month, yeah, absolutely. I think um, if you know, any form of income at the moment for a landlord is probably going to be um, well accepted. Um, but I think, as I said, what's going to happen is that there will be some sort of downward pressure, if you like, for long-term agreements, um, because I think everyone's going to be a little bit shell-shocked from what's uh what's occurred in, over the last two months yeah um i've had someone ask a question just asking if i could explain the city of melbourne grant again yep. um yeah, i'm happy to I'll, I'll try to run through it quickly but um feel free to call me afterwards if if it's not so clear but basically the city of melbourne are offering um certain grants right there's three of them one of them is worth five thousand dollars and that's to get your business online so whether it's um to convert your business on online ordering. And, and granted in that 5,000, that also includes um, advertising. So if you want to do Facebook ads or Google AdWords, that 5,000 is included in that budget. So it's actually pretty good if you can apply for that. Then there's a $2,000 grant, which they will attribute to upskilling and training of your staff. And then there's an extra 10,000 for capital expenditure. 
So if you want to go and buy equipment, whether it's a new coffee machine or a, a dishwasher, um, then they're giving you a dollar for dollar amount up to 10,000. So if you go and spend uh, $20,000 on equipment, that will effectively give you 10,000 for it. Hopefully that's clear. Um, and that's due tomorrow. So the deadline to get the application in is, is tomorrow. Yep. Um, got a question here. What government grants are available in New South Wales for new or COVID impacted businesses? Yep. Um, so I'm just going to grab that detail. Um, obviously, we've been applying for a lot of, being Victorian based, we've been applying for a lot of Victorian ones. Um, so there, there is the, um, there is the uh, payroll tax relief uh, across all the states, but the actual business support fund or the New South Wales version of that um just trying to grab that detail um I might have to come back to that one yep that's fine well it's fine um if anyone else has any other questions please feel free to i've got a question here any government grants in wa <laughs> yeah. yeah so what i will say is that all of the states have their own versions of um the their own support grants so um, what I would suggest is, um, yeah, if you haven't had an opportunity to yet, so I'm just looking at the New South Wales one. So the, um, the New South Wales one is similar to the Victorian one. It's a $10,000 grant um, for eligible New South Wales small business owners. So it'll be the same measure as is what's in Victoria where um, if you didn't qualify for the payroll tax relief, you qualify for the $10,000 grant. Um, for WA, um, I think they've got something similar. Um, but yeah, you should, for everyone on the call or the webinar, definitely take a look at your, um, your government websites they are updating them almost daily at the moment um so hence why i'm a bit <laughs> not as up to date as i could be um, because things are changing on a daily basis so yeah i mean you were just saying that prior to starting that they're changing every day the government's kept changing the rules so yeah so as an example um the job keeper information um, got released on Sunday. Um, the first lot of changes um, was sort of put through Monday morning, and then by Monday afternoon there were more. There was more information, so it's sort of at the pace that we're we're uh, operating at at the moment. Um, let's just ask, what's the website to check for the New South Wales grants? Yep. So if uh, you go to Um, so it's uh, service.newsouthwales.gov.au um, and they've got a COVID-19 help for small business but um, if you go to the, the actual any of the New South Wales government websites they've got a banner at the top which just says visit our COVID-19 page so and that's where they've got all of the detail around support advice and support from a government level. Um, so yeah, check out the, the business support pages and, and, um, apply for the grants. Great. Um, don't know if anyone has any other questions. Um, otherwise any last words or tactics or things you think people should be wary of? Yeah. Um, so I suppose one thing that, um, yeah, we, we have sort of spent a Fair bit of, so initially we were spending a lot of time around, you know, um, what the impact around employees was going to be, and and then it shifted to the businesses themselves. Um, and what we've we have talked a lot, um, and it's probably less relevant to the people on the call today or on the webinar today, is that you know just around. Um, you know, looking at reduced hours or, you know, shutting down completely so that there are some, some real tricks in some of those, um, uh, those bits of, if you like, initiatives that have come through from the government. So um, just making sure that you're really clear 
around you know what staff are still entitled to if they if they're still down um, and just having awareness that um, you know it does have a financial impact um, it may not have a financial impact right now because you're receiving the government stimulus but it, it may actually um, hurt the business down the track um, I've got one example um, you know the a hospitality business where they've actually decided not even though they're eligible they've decided not to um, go forward with the job keeper arrangements just because the you know the debt that they would then incur um, for leave entitlements um, once job keeper finishes um, was just going to be you know it would cripple the business in the long term so whilst we're feeling short-term pain at the moment just don't forget about what the the long-term implications are of you know some of the decisions that you're making right now and, and where possible seek advice around you know what that looks like because you know, as i said things are changing on a daily basis and you know we're, we're certainly having lots of discussions with clients about that at the moment but you know always taking the view that um this, we will get through this and we want to make sure that we've got really strong businesses in six months time when when the stimulus does end. Great, great. Thank you. Um, thanks so much for your time today, Bevan. Hopefully um, our viewers found it very helpful. I definitely found it insightful and learned a few things. So um, hopefully everyone else did too. No worries. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks, everyone.